Hi, my name is Robert Mahar. I am a designer and maker based in Los Angeles, California, and welcome to my studio. I share this space with my lovely and talented friend Molly Meng, who is a paper artist. We are located in downtown Los Angeles in the historic core district. We love our building. It was an old bank building. It turned 100 last year. It was formerly the Crocker Bank building, and it's now the Spring Arts Tower, so it's 12 stories of creative businesses. Our space is a little small. We're just under 325 square feet, so it's always an economy of space. But if I had to be pressed into telling a favorite portion of the studio, it would probably be the bulletin board that is above my desk. It's a little bit of an inspiration board. It's a place where I put projects that I'm thinking about, projects that are in progress, little vintage bits and pieces, work by artists that I love. When I'm stuck on a project and I'm not quite sure what to do with myself, I end up staring at that board and a lot of times it kind of gives me some visual clues on the direction I should go next. One of the places that I draw a lot of inspiration from is my vintage book collection. I love vintage activity books from the 20s through the 60s. These were often used as like rainy day activity books for kids or even more advanced DIY books for the adult hobbyists. They tend to have great titles like it's fun to make it yourself or how to build games and toys. One of the ones that I love primarily for the aesthetic and the colors are this party for children book. It's from the 60s. It's got the most amazing illustrations in it. As a designer, one of the things that I love to do is go through these, find a project that I feel an affinity for, and then figure out a way to put a little bit of a modern twist on it and make the project my own. Things like the payakis that come out of a Polish folk tradition, or even some of the embroidery projects that I do. These are all French anatomical charts that I'm going over and embellishing with embroidery techniques. Others like the Himali, which are based on a Finnish tradition, or even the surprise balls that come out of a sort of party ephemera from the 1950s. These are all projects that I love just because of their origins and getting to make them my own is uh, something that I really love. A lot of the things I tend to surround myself I found at swap meets and flea markets and I have a particular affinity for a lot of vintage schoolhouse ephemera from the 30s, 40s, and 50s. So things like my pull-down map and my vintage teaching charts, these are things that I just I really love because I love the color palette and the aesthetic from that period. One of the things I have a particular affinity for are vintage party supplies. I had a vendor that bought out a vintage bakery from the 30s and had cake toppers from that period that I just think are fantastic. Now, will I ever use these in a project? Not entirely sure. Do I love them and need to have them in mass? Yeah, and I don't know why. But they all live in this box and I kind of think that's fantastic. Who needs a baggie full of bird-shaped slide whistles? I don't know, apparently I do. These are all cake toppers from probably the 30s to the 40s. They're spun cotton and chenille. They're sort of ridiculously cute. A lot of the vintage materials, I think, are things that inspire me in my current work. I love crepe paper. I love chenille. I love all of these harder to find elements that you aren't used as commonly these days. We have been in this studio space for about a year now, and I have to tell you it's an unbelievable luxury. I don't believe it's imperative that you have a studio space. I'm just fortunate that I was able to pair up with a friend, find a space that we loved, and it's so nice to be able to separate my home life from my work life, have some place where I can go shut the door and really concentrate on the project at hand. It's not to say it can't be done at home. I've worked out of a home office for years. When I say home office, I really mean my bedroom. So having this space to sort of spread out my materials, have things organized at the ready without having that domino effect at home where I know what I need, but it's in the back of the closet and it's going to take me 15 minutes to dig all the boxes out. At least here, I can pull it right off the shelf and dive right into my project. And I try my best not to buy a lot of gadgets. I'm afraid I'm going to end up with one of the, you know, sort of like a bread maker syndrome where there's a lot of gadgets in the studio that I just never use. But one thing I've been finding that I do use a lot in my studio is uh, my electronic cutter. It interfaces with my laptop, sort of like a printer would and it will cut out any sort of vector design that I create on my laptop, which I really love. It is the tool that I use a lot when I'm doing paper flower making. So it's something that will allow me to cut out really intricate designs with a lot of regularity. 
I use it also for cutting tags and signage. It's a great tool, especially when you've got sort of an eye for graphic design, but can't necessarily cut out all of those intricate pieces. This comes in really handy. So because Molly and I are both teaching artists and designers, one of the things we love to do is host workshops here in the studio. So we do this about twice a month. You can see it's a compact space. What most, we do six to eight students. A lot of the projects that I tend to do are paper-based. We're fortunate enough in our building to have an amazing vintage bookstore on the ground floor. So we'll often start with field trips down there to get ideas and some inspiration, bring some of our finds up to the studio, and continue to work at our projects on these tables. So that's a little sneak peek into my studio. Thanks to Creative Live for coming to visit us. If you'd like to learn more about the workshops that Molly and I teach here in the studio, visit my personal website, robert-mahar.com.